Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. There are quite a few tools that I rely on on an almost daily basis in order to keep and breed my boas, including a number of tools that I've repurposed from other more common uses. Today I want to share with you my list of my top 10 boa keeping and breeding tools. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in my future videos on keeping and breeding these amazing animals. My first indispensable boa keeping tool is this laser thermometer gun. And this is a great way of determining the precise temperatures in your boa's enclosure. So you just point the gun at where you want to measure, like the hot spot on one end of the cage, you pull the trigger, you see this little red dot, and that will give you the precise temperature readout. And so I use this a lot. Every time I check in on my snakes when I'm doing my routine maintenance, I'll scan the hot spot, I'll scan the cool side, and I'll also scan the body of the snake just to make sure that the enclosure is in the desired temperature range. It's also extremely valuable for breeding because you need to know exactly what temperature that you have when you're doing your cycling. So if you don't have one of these, this is one of the most valuable tools you can have for keeping and breeding boas. Second on my list of boa keeping tools is this plastic grabbing tool that is the perfect tool for offering food to your boas. I know a lot of people use tweezers or tongs or hemostats, but I found this very inexpensive tool. It works better than all those. You can see it's got a few feet of space between the food item and between your hand so you don't risk being bitten and it's really easy and convenient to just grab a rodent and just dangle it in front of your snake. So this is the perfect feeding tool for offering your snake food. My third boa keeping tool is this ice scraper and being originally from New England I needed to use this a lot to scrape the ice off my car but fortunately I don't have that problem now that I live in California. So I have this leftover from those days of my youth and I basically use this for scraping feces and especially urates which have built up on the plastic snake cages. So urates can be extremely hard to get off and this is the perfect tool for scraping them off. If you live in an area that doesn't have much snow like I do it might be kind of hard to find one of these locally but it shouldn't be a problem to order one online and have it shipped to your house. My fourth indispensable boa keeping tool is this soldering iron with this narrow pointy tip. And although you can use it for soldering, that's not what I use it for. I use it for melting holes in plastic items. It's great for melting air holes in tubs of various sizes that I have in my racks, or even a plastic snake cage. Or if you want to melt holes to attach something to, it works great for that as well. So people have asked me, well, why don't you use a drill? You can use a drill. The problem with using a drill is that it creates all these little plastic flecks and dust that get into the snake cage. It's kind of a mess to clean up. And then the sides of the holes are kind of jagged and kind of sharp. With this tool, it just melts the hole and you have this nice smooth edge of the hole. So I think it works a lot better than a drill. So you can pick one up at any hardware store relatively inexpensively, perfect for melting those ventilation holes. Boa keeping tool number five is this snake hook. This is the 30 inch Midwest Tong standard snake hook. And I actually got this recently and I did a video on that. So if you want to hear all about it, I'll refer you to that video. But this is a great hook. It's really well built, uh, really finely crafted. And it's the perfect tool for moving a medium sized boa and keeping the head away from it you so you don't get bit. Number six on my list of indispensable tools for boa breeders is a good camera. And I know a lot of people just use their phone to take the pictures. And you can sometimes get an okay picture from a phone, but you're not going to get top quality and you're not going to be in control of the process. So I'm not going to recommend any specific type of camera or brand of camera. There are literally thousands of different models out there that can all take fantastic photos. Pretty much any camera from a decent manufacturer that was made in the last 10 years is a contender. But you should look for two things in a good camera to take pictures of your boas. You want a camera that has removable lenses, so you can put different types of lenses on depending on what you want to take the picture of. And you want a camera that allows you to control the exposure settings, the f-stop, the shutter speed, the ISO setting, etc. If you're relying on your cell phone camera, you can't do any of that. 
And in order to take great pictures of your boas, you need a basic understanding of exposure theory, what an f-stop is, what shutter speed is, what ISO setting is, and the relationship between these three things, how they determine the depth of field and other effects of how the snake is gonna look when you capture the picture of it. I actually did a video on snake photography, so check that one out if you want more discussion of exposure theory and camera choice. But you'll notice that if you take the time to understand basic exposure theory and understand how to take a picture, your photography skills are going to improve immensely. And a good photo of, a, of your boa is extremely important when it comes time to sell your animals. Number seven on my list of indispensable tools is a smartphone. And I use this for all elements of communicating with people about boas, either people that are interested in buying boas, people that have questions about boas, or just following people on social media. It also allows me to check in on my YouTube channel, see how videos are doing, and respond to your comments. And then lastly, it's got a camera in it, and as I mentioned, I don't recommend using this as a primary uh, camera for your boas. It's great to take very quick snapshots to send someone a quick pic of how a boa looks. So smartphones, just like many other aspects of our lives, I can't imagine how we would do boa keeping without these items. Item number eight is on the other end of the technology spectrum from a smartphone, and that's a simple bucket. So you can see I have a lot of these big five gallon buckets, and they're great for servicing snake enclosures. So when I'm going through cleaning the snake cages, I can dump excess water in here when I'm cleaning out the water dishes. I can put substrate in here when I'm changing substrate, and I can also use them for changing out my rodents. When I'm changing the substrate, I can put the mice in here, change out the cage, and then get the mice. So these, of course, have all kinds of uses. I actually picked up two of these for six bucks recently, uh, which is you know, a pretty good deal. You can also buy lids if you want to use them for storing a snake. You can put a lid on top. I would recommend putting air holes in the side. But you know the uses are limitless, and buckets are a great thing to have around if you're a snake breeder. Item nine is another low tech and relatively inexpensive item. That's these spray bottles. And I picked these up for a buck a piece at the dollar store. And I've got quite a few of them. Half of them I just put water in. And this is great for spraying down substrate in my boas enclosures to increase the humidity. And then I've got others that I use to put chlorhexidine solution. And I use these for sanitizing my snake tubs and snake cages. So you can never have enough of these. Uh, the ones from the dollar store, they don't last all that long, but usually you can get a year or two out of them before they break. You can also pay a few dollars and get some slightly better quality ones at your local hardware store. Although I usually just go for these inexpensive ones. But I can't imagine how I would clean my snake cages without having these spray bottles. The last item on my list you might not need if you're still lucky enough to be young, but if you're like me, late middle age, your body is rapidly deteriorating and this thing helps a lot. So this is just a little end table and what I use this for is to put all of my reptile servicing supplies, my spray bottles and water dishes and substrate and things like that, and I set it up next to each rack when I'm servicing them. And that way I don't have to keep bending down to the floor, putting strain on my knees and my joints. And it also helps speed things up a lot. You can also use a little cart for this, and the cart has the advantage of having wheels. You can just push it from rack to rack. So I highly recommend you get something like this if you want to save time and save wear and tear on your body when you're servicing your snake cages. So I'm going to end the video today by showing you a couple of my nice boas that I haven't shown off too much in other videos. And the first is this beautiful Iquitos Peruvian true red tail boa. This is a farm raised or farm bred female who was born in 2016. And what I love about this animal is she just classically demonstrates the look of the Iquitos Peruvian boas. Look at how dark and inky black these saddles are. And look at how nice and red the tail is with also the beautiful golden body coloration. She also has a lot of really cool head markings and she's showing a faint orangey pink dorsal stripe. So just a classic Iquitos uh, Peruvian true red tail boa. This particular female, she might be ready to breed in another probably two years, maybe maybe next year if things go right, but probably 
uh, for babies in 2023. Just a really cool animal. Uh, she, you can see she's a little bit uh, frisky. I don't really handle this animal that often and she's just, a, you know, not my tamest animal, but just a really beautiful boa to look at. One more true red tail that I don't show off for the camera very much. And this is my 2017 male Venezuelan true red tail boa. So this is not from the Tomatama locality of Venezuelan red tail, which I actually have paired up this year, but this is from the Rio Bravo bloodline. And this is a male that was produced by my buddy, Mike Lucchese in 2017. So he's a sub adult. Um, you can see he's not, the, he's not that big, maybe three and a half, four feet long. One of the cool things with the Venezuelan red tails is they don't get quite as big as most of the other red tails, with the adults typically being in the five to six foot range. They also have this beautiful golden coloration, maybe not quite as bright as the Peruvian, but more of a beautiful golden brown color. And they have these cool bow tie shaped saddles. Just the perfect true red tail for someone that wants a smaller animal. They're not easy to find, so you know, good luck finding them. But I hope to produce these beauties in the not too distant future. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 tools that are indispensable for boa keeping and breeding. As always, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.